I need to play the land. I might need this treasure at some point. All right, what what did I hit? I want something really really cool from you. Uh, Raska seems pretty good with a lot of planeswalkers. I mean, that's a good factor for the tokens. <laughs> Hello everyone, it's Love here and today some more control decks. I know you like Ors of Control and we went with this archetype today. And this is not your typical Ors of because we are breaching the multiverse today. And oh boy, if you like Eternal Wonder, like in today's games she did so much work. You will love it. Like she really carried some games from start to finish. And this just absolutely dominates the game if it's not answered immediately. Uh, other than this, we have Invasion of Torvada. We don't we really play too many black spells because we are not a standard Ors of deck. We are not like splitting white and black mana evenly and just going for those invokes and you know the standard stuff. We are more of a white control deck for early and mid game. So we have this shell and our late game is where the black color starts to shine. So you know invasion is pretty cool because it gets back either the wonder or just the emperor or any other permanent like bang buster for the value but when you flip this you can create a lot of pressure you can uh, try with more of them i went with one and i think that's enough uh, however the big late game for the deck is bridge the multiverse mill get two cool cards from your opponent and your own uh, you know library and one of the cool things if you are a demir player you get to kill them with their own win con and you will see today it will be pretty fun and they won't be super happy about it. <laughs> so yeah, pretty sweet card. Uh, and one of the good things about the deck is that it has really healthy like start of the game. Four laying down arms means that you can answer one drops, uh, two mana dorks like Spirited Companion Farmhand and a Ganjo later means that you should be hitting clans very very consistently and you can ramp up to, okay, not ramp, but you get into the seven mana very healthily. And that's one of the good sides of the deck. And we tried Geek's Command instead of Sunfall and you will see why it's not here. We also tried Loran, but wedding announcement is better. So we'll see those cars, but since we removed them, the win rate went up a little bit. So it seems like, like a good change. And you know what? I had a hidden bonus with this one. I'm not sure if it will be for everyone, but I could not find an aggro deck playing this deck. There's only control on the ladder. So I I'm not jumping to conclusions. All I'm saying is when I played this deck, I didn't meet any single mono red. Maybe just added bonus for the deck, I don't know. And uh, with that being said, let's go into the game three. Don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed the channel. It helps you to find notifications so you don't need to check the channel so often. And you know, it helps me as a creator. So win-win and it's really cool and nice and makes me happy. So with that being said, let's go into the games. Hope you enjoyed the video. Have fun, guys. All right, and just about the competitiveness, all right, but because I forgot to, to mention it. I don't really think this is the best version of ours. Of, I think it's less competitive than the previous ones. So this one is more for, you know, entertainment. And I hope that's that's how you take it. And it's also a bit more fresh than just playing in Vogue's, but they are a bit better. So, you know, just for the record, so you know, and be careful with crafting this one. Just watch the video and enjoy. All right, opponent goes first. And if there's any aggro in standard, it should be this one, right? It looks, is it, but it should be a... Man, literally nobody plays aggro when you play this deck. <laughs> It's insane. Not a single monorod. I'm so baffled man right now. Alright, uh, back to the game. We go farmhand. Uh, that sets up for the next turns pretty nicely. We have the reliquary, re so moment we hit the bangbuster we get some free value, but probably long time before we use it. Fiber. Sure. A bit unfortunate because it breaks our turn, but you know what? I think this draw is pretty good. And I really don't want to see attracts on the next turn, so let's play like this. I get the card. Who? March is still a bit better. I could remove the Bindbuster, so that's why I hesitated a little bit, but you know. Yeah, the Goblin is m the most scary card in standard, you know. Atraxa? Psh, you can kill her, but what about the Goblin? Alright, Harvester. I just read some input about this being absolutely best to drop ever. 
and it, it is really good. It's this hard to appreciate at first, but when you get all the effects it provides, it's really versatile. All right, uh, what do we do? We play planes because that's what we do. We probably attack, right? It gives away a little bit what we have because this attack is no oh, but he can crew the bankbuster, right? We could, we could exile the bankbuster then, but we don't really get value. It has no summoning sickness. Oh, I don't think it's good. I don't think it's good. So we will try to be defensive. He has fiber. All right, and for this reason, I think we go like this. We need to fight a little bit for the value here, I think. He gets two cards, so five to five, but at least he doesn't get to seven, which would be a disaster. It would be hard to fight Ragdos uh, in the value game, uh, because we would have to hit the bridge and two, two black mana. And so far it doesn't look like this. Some more bang busters, not exactly what I would love to see. And let, let's see how it works out. The first swamp is here, not bad. All right, he, on the next time he will tap Reflection of Kikijiki, right? So we lose one of the creatures, but we can get rid of the Kikijiki and then play the um, the Wanderer, maybe. But he can invoke the Sparrows. But we will have additional creature. I think it's good. I think we just pass the turn. Wedding announcement is super enticing. Right? That's the word. It means that you, you like it. I like it. That that was the meaning. And yeah, bang, second Bankbuster will go off and we hate it. But we, we need to absorb all of this value and it will hurt, man. But maybe the wonder can offset all of this. Not going super well so far, but we will try to make it work. More blood tokens. So this is basically at some point during the game it's Z1 mana, draw a card. Alright, the farmhand, good decision. However, the Kiki Jiki is tapped right now. Do you attack with Banky Buster? No. Smart. He knows there's some bad things that might happen. And generally I don't play so greedily, but if he answers my Emperor with something, I'm fine with it because I have a better one on the next turn. And this can clear both of the, like basically clear the whole board, and that's pretty good. So let's see if he has removal. It will go card for card then, and if not, that's really good. If he allowed the block, I guess he doesn't have anything. Generally when you play the block, good, good. Alright, after the combat phase. That's a really nice sun for turn, isn't it? So, big choice ahead of us. We can go for a bit of a board, or we can play the Eternal Wanderer and clear the board. I mean, I like the second option pretty much. We also get to... well, no, no, no. We lose one of the Planeswalkers, unfortunately. I don't think there's a cool way to force the Bankbuster crewing, unfortunately. So. First, we kill Charlotte. Man, this is such a weird effect. First you target the sweeper, but also the sacrifice effect. I actually messed it at, at first. You guys mentioned it, and that's how I know. And let's keep the blocker for the bangbuster. Hasty, hasty. Invoke. Easy. Of course. Why wouldn't you have it? Oh boy. One card still, and a lot of mana. Best card, down the drain. Let's play our good boy, see what we draw. This hurt, but it's in vogue. What can you do? I mean, you can keep playing it in every deck, but we don't want to do it, so we are trying. Uh, wedding announcement offsets a little bit the next one, which shouldn't come in like until like five turns. All right, that's his free card. Because the cutdown is not really worth it at this point. So let's see. The Bangbuster gives him the game winning advantage right now. We need our Bangbuster and we didn't hit a single one so far. 
it's not good anyway. Like, not at this point. I think we double attack right now. Because I actually won the card super hard. <laughs> we need something that does stuff, man. A lot of followers. They will come handy, but they don't really give us place right now. Alright. Land, second free card. Alright, and... Man, it's it's really hard to outvalue this kind of deck, but we are doing it. This is the last Bangbuster card. And then we play even game, just with us being three cards behind. But maybe we can salvage it. Alright, you got your last one. Fable. I actually don't mind it. The more on the board, the merrier. I could draw one card with the land, but I'm greedy, I want to. And I will attack probably. All right, now we're talking. That's that's something that really matters. So we could go for the dog. It's not the best play. And we cannot sweep after it. Hmm, this is an interesting situation. Uh, Emperor is really really strong card here. I want the cards from the companion really bad. We could also just throw everything and force him into more plays, but then we lose the wedding announcement card or the token. It doesn't feel great, does it? I think this is the play. I think this is the play. A bit greedy, but we need to get, you know, for with it. Uh, I could deny the cycling from the Fable. No, no, no. It has to be a creature. It needs to transform first. So I can plus one the companion, lay down arms here, and then have two tokens for a block. I mean, that's pretty good, right? I cannot attack because then he kills the dog. Even if I didn't play the Wandering Eternal Wanderer, I think he would still do it. Oh, that's a removal. That's really that's super mean. That was really something I cared about. Die, Goblin. We'll just ex you know exchange blows and we'll kill what the other player loves. He loves the Goblin. I love the dog, and they will both die. All right, we get the flip. We get some board presence. Just please, don't have another Invoke Despair, that's all I'm asking. And this cycling really helps. Did he cycle one card? Does it mean he has it in the hand already? No. Alright. If this will be like this, I think we are in decent spot, man. Now I just want my wedding announcement to be a creature so I can blink it. That would be super fun. One creature attacking. Cool. We lose everything on the next turn because we were farewell. So we definitely block. Ah, uh, but we don't double block, so we don't trade. Hmm. There was an argument to go double block, man. This draw. Oh, I hate it. It's so bad. Alright, so this is definitely a farewell. We could also go Sanford, but he cycles more, so it's it's not a real choice. Alright. Artifacts, enchantments, and probably the graveyards. No Takenuma in the field, it definitely is there. So let's go for everything. We have some permanence, but we'll, we'll get more at some point. In, if, in case we get invasion. So that is a strong play. Alright, so some pressure acquired. Alright, four cards to our two cards and one there. Possibly four cards here. Harvester is absolutely okay. Uh, still a good draw. All right, that's a that's an enchantment. We attack. What will you say for it? Smirk. One creature attacking. All right. I think we make another one. We could sun for, create a two two, and make another. You know what? I oh, but what about sure that? Let's go like this. So first we make the the thing, and then we make another thing. 
It also buffers Invoke the Spare a little bit, it lets us draw cards, I think it's pretty good. And we will sacrifice the real quarry on the end step. Alright, one card out. But we still have the token, which means that Emperor should be kinda safe. Just, you know, there's this one card that matters, the rest of the deck doesn't. Well, alright, there might be a Chandra as well. Or into the bridge depending on how he plays. This is definitely not something that matters. So we invested a little bit in the board, and thanks to this, we force him to play more into the board, so our sweeper will be even better. Especially Sunfall is really cool in this regard. Do I want to draw a card with wedding announcement, or I want more tokens? I think I'm fine with the card, honestly. Let's draw first and see what we get, because that might affect our decision. Like, Into the Bridge are still in the deck, I just want to point it out. We could draw it anytime, but you know what's going on. Alright, and we probably block then. We save loyalty. My turn. No into the bridge. Never had it. Alright, let's attack first, see if the damage goes through. Honestly, if he knew our hand, he would block and make our sun for worse, but potentially we get 4 free damage and that might really matter. Alright, do we go to combat phase? I wonder why, why the hesitation. I don't think there's any like difference. Maybe he just uh, evaluated if he wants to remove it already. I mean, why not do it at the start, right? Alright, second phase of the combat. Are we allowed? <laughs> Think about this one super hard. Maybe, maybe the second instance is where you remove it. Alright, cool. I fall the sum. That's a really strong play right now. We recycle this one, so I'm not playing it. Good. Very nice. Now... Oh boy. Oh, it's so tempting to get rid of this one. We get the, the thing anyway. Man, this denies him. Oh, but he just uses it in response. Yeah. So, if he had good cards in the hand, like Invoke the Spurs, he would already cast it. And he didn't. It means the cards in his hand are not amazing, so he will do it anyway at the end step or in response to the removal. See? And we would waste the value right there. Oh boy. Even Invoke is not the end of the world, right? We lose the, the Wonder, which is huge blow. Harvester, sure. As long as those are like normal powered cards, it's okay. Uh, the blood token is still good. Like, it is a relevant card even at this stage of the game, man. And now we can start to be a little bit aggressive. Bang Buster, finally. Alright, that's really good. So, we double attack. This is quite a lot of damage. We draw the card, and we already have a blocker as well. We play the Bang Buster, probably. I could play Bangbuster, draw a card, exile it, and draw another card. It's very strong value play. I will definitely play it. But do I want more pressure to try to kill him? Or get more value? Like, we have those breaches, man, so if we draw cards, we should be okay. So let's do it. Let's go for the value. We can also hit a land, which gives us nice play as well. Alright, so he has his blood token, but we have even more stuff, and we have Fightful Absence as well. Alright, drawing cards like crazy. Alright, I, I think we are doing it, guys. Slowly but surely, we grind the Tragdos out of value. We dodged Invoke Despair for long enough, and now it's not scary. Right now, even if he plays it, it's okay. Like, I will win anyway. Man, that was a grind.
Amp what, like Eternal Wonder really really did so much work this game. It's insane. Without this card we would not win. <laughs> I have it. But one turn too late. Sure. So we sacrifice the weakest one. And you can attack, but you cannot raise us anymore. Ah? Uh -huh. Alright, cool. Let's draw a card. I'm not giving him the card with Faithful Absence, so we're not casting it. Land. Double Cycling. Let's draw more. we we'll see what we get. Maybe it's into the bridge? I mean, I'll take this one. Definitely not what I want, but okay. And we cycle the Raffin Tower, right? That's the play. So it gives him a little bit of life, but it also solidifies our advantage. So right now, I think Into the Bridge is the best card he could have. I'm not even sure if he plays it. This doesn't look like Chandra Into the Bridge version, but you know, you never know. Like, we also are Into the Bridge deck, but... Four. So we don't get anything, sure. If you cast for five, you get the creature back, but he doesn't have anything, right? So, sure, one card to rule them all. Another Harvester. So we know what happens on this turn. Let's cycle. Sunfall is okay. Invasion. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy, that's the scoop. Invasion, finally, being useful. <laughs> all right, very, very cool. All right, we did the thing, what now? I mean, uh, not really sure. All right, that was a cool play, but in the end, <laughs> uh, we will just do it like this. I can get the treasure, I can get the bang buster. All right. So if he wants to trade, that's fine, but honestly, we are not flipping it. The game is way too long right now, so the life total actually matters way more. I'm not scared about anything, even Chandra plus one ink. Alright, that should be the explosion. <laughs> I name it, alright? I name it. Go with the plus one, but you don't have enough mana for invoke, so it should not super matter. That's a pretty decent draw. Still not enough. All right, he doesn't. He doesn't have double red, so he can cannot even play this. And here we are. You know what? I'm playing it before he scoops. So you can see that we actually had the card in the deck: Chandra and Wandering Emperor. We did it. We did it into the bridge. And I guess it won. <laughs> that was pretty hilarious game, man. So we make a zero. Then we can crew the Bangbuster. And possibly the second main buster attack for 8 and burn him for 5. I mean, that was a game for sure. A weird one, but a pretty cool one. Alright, triple emperor hand. <laughs> I mean, on the draw, on the play it's actually okay. Uh, because we have bang buster, so we can just try to work through it. And if we can hit... Oh, that's actually really good. And so far it's a good draw. I have to say, this is a really decent draw. We have the Bangbuster. Braid would be the biggest punish. That's the only thing we fear. Harvester is not one of them. We also got the land, so we don't need to draw main phase. And we can hold up the mana, which is pretty good. Which is pretty good. Let's take the hit. Especially with double emperors. We absolutely don't care. We really want to draw this card. And Grixis. Also, they have the Appraiser. I think they have the Appraiser in the hand. And their play was to force us. Oh boy, will I really? Is that one of those games again? Please, Shuffler. Please. <sighs> Exile. No Appraiser for you. I'm not getting lands. You are not getting cards. Alright, that's the deal. So he can cycle one of the Blood Thingies and curate his draw. He decided he doesn't want to, so his draw is perfect, which cannot be said about ours. Alright, that's fine. Just give me this freaking plant, man. I cannot exile it. You know what? Frick it. I'm drawing my land one way or the other or another. Four planes. Out. Out with this. 
<laughs> oh my god. It would be much easier if I could draw them like he does, naturally, with no investment, but we need to fight for ours. That's the Ajani star style. <laughs> he got disconnected at some point, didn't he? <laughs> alright. Alright, alright. Five. S scary. I will give you. This is scary. And he can make an upkeep stop. So even though he doesn't have right now anything... Yeah, yeah, you get the idea. So... This is 20 damage to the face. I cannot tap this man. I could go Eternal Wanderer, but you really don't want to do this man. Like, you don't want to see Brainstorm every single turn. However, the mighty Sunfall. And by the way, uh, second Sunfall was Geek's Command. And as you can see, Geek's Command would lose us the game right now. So unfortunately, Sunfall seems just stronger overall. So exile effect, no death trigger, your strategy goes to the bin. Honestly, he was he was playing really greedy, so I expect he might have another one. And for this reason we keep the sound for probably. Alright. And some make disappear mana. I don't love it. But we need to hit those lands, man, and you know we are not drawing them normally. The land. So much better. Alright. Alright. I don't want to give him this treasure, man. But it might be something we have to do. Do I Fateful Absence it on the upkeep? It doesn't really feel like a great play, especially that I can just activate this. Or Emperor, like I have plenty of other options. Giving him the card when he's down to 5 is not optimal. Like Fateful Absence is great, but when you are in the value matchup you actually need to be careful with it. It's more like Chandra, some card that you don't mind going to for one. He didn't go for... his hand must be really good, because this is relevant card. It means that all of his cards are relevant. What can you do, man? You got the treasure. I think we go for the Emperor. Where are we? Uh, can I can I crew the Bang Bust and lose it? I'm getting the 2-drop on the next turn, but I don't have 2-drop. Hmm. Upkeep stop. I could use the Reliquary. I get two cards and then I get it back. Yeah, I think it's a good one. Alright, so our next turn will be weaker. Which means I probably want to Emperor, so I get some impactful effect on this one. This is a hard play. I'm not sure if that's the best line of play, but it definitely feels like the most interesting one. Do I want to buffer it? Or do I give him the cards? I can buffer it entirely, and honestly, I think that's the play. I don't like it. I also don't get the reliquary thing, so probably the upkeep stop is not needed anymore. Ah, counter spell? It seems he has a counter spell as well. Why would you not have everything? But we have seen, his hand is freaking stacked like crazy. But we can get damper for this reason, right? Or the Wanderer, because nobody knows who who this Wanderer is. Alright, let's try it then. I get rid of the Goblin, it's some instant value. Ah uh, man, you know he will have another one and will regret our life, but what can you do? If he draws so well, it's always advantage. If he doesn't have Invoke the Spell, which is basically the biggest uh, planeswalker removal they have, right? Otherwise it's damage based and 6 royalty is way too high. They seem... I wonder if they play Singularity and they have some in the hand, or maybe they play just Invoke the Spare version, which honestly feels a bit more reliable. It's basically just a great 5 drop then. And when it dies it gives gets you so much ahead tempo-wise that it's crazy. Singularity is a bit, you know... Alright. Alright, I like what I see, man. 
Down to three cards. I have the Eternal Wanderer. I have some for worse and you know this kind of stuff. It's probably the sun for even though we get some value from farewell, uh, it taps us way too much. But sun for oh man, sun for is actually man. We are still missing those land drops. That's crazy. Huh. <laughs> that's that's weird. We could get rid of one of those, or get the bangbuster back with all the value. It could go Faithful Absence at the upkeep into Wandering Emperor. Maybe that's good. Are you good? Hmm. Not a hard choice. I don't have good plays because I'm so constrained on lands. I have like 15 mana in place or 20. Hmm. Wedding Announcement seems the weakest from all of those. I don't want to give him the card. I think we go like this and we see the reaction. This will be artifacts and honestly, I will go for the gravers. Maybe a mistake, but I don't super care. Let's see if it goes through, because I'm not really convinced. If he didn't play, kill the emperor, the big emperor, it means he doesn't have a way to do it. And he needs to top deck it. And the blood token is really, really good, especially. I'm, I'm a bit surprised he's not cycling the cards because Invoke Despair is the best one. Let's see if he has Make Disappear. Normally it wouldn't matter so much because we would have like three lands more, but when you get mana shorted, to put it lightly, uh, you start to fall behind in multiple ways for no reason. Alright. Good. Ah, that. Why would you not cycle it? You can cycle, then see the new card, and then decide if you want to cycle. That was a misplay. And depending on what the cards he has in the hand, it could be a big misplay. Because this is potentially the difference between hitting Invoke Despair and not hitting one. Even if he has second one. Alright. Bridge the Multiverse card we would love to cast ourselves, but let's see if he mute all of ours. Of course. Milton cards? All of the value gone from the deck. <laughs> oh my god, at least he didn't hit anything relevant from our side. But he he destroyed our endgame because this is exactly our game plan, but we couldn't hit Lance and we couldn't hit Breach. Oh boy. Alright, the hard mode is definitely activated. The wonder, the Eternal Wanderer is the big thing that keeps us in the game right now. I think we are going for the Sunfall. And we still don't draw those lands. It's absolutely insane. If he has Make Disappear, I'm not sure if I can beat it. Just basic, based on not having lands, man. Wow. How could you ever beat such good gameplay? You know, you could draw one land and that's it. That was our exile effect. We can do it again, but if he has removal from the top, he might just kill us directly. Do I take two damage and die to invoke? Or do I give him another brainstorm on the next turn, which is absolutely horrible for us? Those are the choices when you don't hit your lands. We can kill it, but... If that's a good card on the top, we will die probably. Man, I don't know what the good choice is. I honestly do not. I think we need to roll the dice. You live because I am if I lose, like, I don't feel that it was my misplay, man. Cut down. Alright, I'll take it. Whew, man, killing Hidetsugu is always like experience that you, you you don't think there's a good way around. All right, Bangbuster, one card. He's still searching for those invokes. He has five mana, good colors. He can draw it. Land, good. All right. Whew, that was the scariest turn of the of the day, man. Absolutely. You could think that we won't miss the. You know, the lands with so many land fetch, but here we are. It goes to the owners. Cool. I like being the owner of this one because maybe I will hit my lands finally. 
and I really think it's worth it. Artifacts, do we go for the Gravers? I mean, those Gravers can be scary. He has Takenuma, but it's already in the battlefield. He has Apprisers, which really benefit from it. We have some things that benefit from it, but we have more in the in the hand, so we don't need the Graveyard. I think that's the plan. Two cards, one top deck, to rule them all. I, I think we, we are doing it slowly. I also definitely would like this planes from my deck, thank you. And finally, we fixed our mana issues thanks to our opponent casting into the breach and us, Eternal Wanderer, getting back the farm hand and I finally can my hit my 7 drop. Oh boy, I did not think we would win this one, to be honest. It was so rough. We could lose at any point with Hidatsugu. Alright, opponent goes first. We have full hand of remover, so let's see if that's a control deck. It seems to be the rule, right? Yep. No aggro today on the ladder. Just nobody plays it. And this this deck is amazing. Moment you hit it on the ladder, you never hit a single mono red. <laughs> That's the rule. <laughs> Alright, so let's go for the farm hand. We have double black for the bridge, so we just chill, remove everything and bridge the multiverse. That's that's the play. They will invoke, we will bridge. They will invoke faster, right? Bro, do you really want to respond to this tree? Yeah, you definitely need to do it first. Otherwise, I will draw a planes. If you don't do it, I would only draw a plane. So, you know, big, big difference right there. <laughs> the, the, the taking of time on some moments is, is so weird always. But it's okay. All right, we are getting to slowly our value cards, and that's good. Uh, if that's a shard that we can remove it with four planes, and that's really good, that's why we play those tap lands, right? Shard it, perfect. I will gladly draw a card, play a planes, and exile it for one mana. Then we play the farm hand, so we can get rid of some of the invoke despair power, and also improve our draws, right? The less planes you have, Oh, they know, <laughs> they know. If you want to be extremely, like, you know, pro player, you actually should pay attention to your priorities. So, for example, before playing half arm hand, I should be thinking if that will hold the priority and be prepared and just pass the turn instantly. Uh, otherwise, he knows exactly what the card is. He already seen it. Yep, you will keep playing shorted. I will keep playing lay down arms. That's how we roll today. Honestly, it's really good for us. And every turn we are getting a little bit more ahead. Not many planes left in the deck, that's also pretty good. And we say, hiya! Alright. I expect Invoke the Spare, but then we can follow up with Wonder, and that's actually good for us. He also doesn't draw many cards, like it's only one card, so there's low chance of another Invoke. I know I said it a lot, and they always have it, but it really should work this way. Like, can you ever, do you even remember a player that didn't have Invoke in like first 14 cards? Like, I honestly did not. Like, they always have it. They usually have two of them somehow. Alright, so we start creating Samurais and we see what the reaction... Man, you know it, it probably will be Invoke Despair, right? But it really shouldn't be. This one time just play statistically. <laughs> you should not have it. If you... All right, they don't have it. Finally, we had a game when they don't have two. Only one. Just one. You know, the, the standard. All right, so we have we have pretty good deal here. One mana, so we don't need to be scared. Let's see. Oh, right. I need to play the land. I might need this treasure at some point. All right, what, what did I hit? I want something really, really cool from you. Uh, Raska seems pretty good with a lot of planeswalkers. I like the dog, but I like the Emperor even more. I mean, that's a good factor for the tokens. <laughs> Let's create like this. I want a lot of creatures. I could proliferate. So I could make this one, then plus one, and proliferate would get the counters, but I don't like it. Alright, I mean, that was a pretty good bridge the multiverse. Uh, we couldn't hit the Eternal Wonder, so even even uh, Invoke the Spare doesn't help them. Yeah, because 6-drop uh, and 
you know, their 6 drop is probably the best hit we can get, but we already had part of the equation, so we needed the weaker Emperor just, you know, to fill the Planeswalker board. And I don't think they can come back from this. I mean, bridge the multiverse when it goes off, uh, it's pretty brutal. Sure. Two cards to go. They have Vraska, so they have nice cardo, but so so are we. Or so so do we. What is the chapter? One, hopefully. Oh, they always go for one. And they always hit my full hand of lands and sometimes spells. And uh, that is pretty brutal. So let's force another sweeper. And we played Bangbuster first. Simply. Simply, because it gets proliferated. Also, Raska can actually start doing stuff very quickly. Oh, well, we, we don't want to proliferate that one. So let's go Enchantment Gravers. This way we get rid of his part of the stuff. And this has Summoning Sickness, so of course we cannot attack with it. But we will on the next turn, so Bangbuster is actually pretty scary for them. It means Raska will die in two turns, unless they have non-artifact -art like removal. And so far they are playing Go for the Frauds, right? And Go for the Frauds is such a cool card. Uh, like, you remember paying this to life just to remove anything? And suddenly it's gone, and Monoret is still here. Imagine if there was no Go for the Frauds and we would have to play Infernal Grasp. Man, Monoret would be even better. Alright, another Path of Pearl, but this one will not matter as much. And with Proliferate we can keep making those double tokens every turn. I mean, that's another cruelty. Do you want to check my last card? He should go for chapter 2. Yep. I probably invoke Despair, right? Or maybe another cruelty and he just keeps playing them over and over. Yeah, I honestly think that might be the best case. From the graveyard, he doesn't really have anything. It's your graveyard from a graveyard. The Eldest Reborn always gets me, man. I could get the card. So first, first things first. We do it like this and we see the card. Loran, I mean, that is an impactful one. But you know what's, what's a cool thing? This. Enjoy your creature. <laughs> Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Alright, let's make this, let's make this. Uh, I really want to attack on this turn. It might be another Geek's Command, so let's call this one up. And we crew. And in two turns we kill the Raska, which is the only reason he's in the game still. And let's get rid of the top plant, right? Alright, triple planeswalkers, just triple abilitying every turn. Double Path of Pearl definitely helps to mitigate it for a moment. But he needs more of it. That's a decent one. Uh, by the way, Raska will ultimate. I think this should be a minus to right on the samurai. And you know that my hand is card like clans, so. I, I don't think that's a really good play, especially with Raska, we can just keep drawing Clant and something every turn. <laughs> Draw is the last play of the usual one. But you know, I, always, I, I also sometimes do it, so when you play quickly it actually isn't as easy. That's a good card from the top. Alright, we could Sunfall and just kill Raska, seems like a good idea. Uh, what the ultimate does, if target player has fewer than 9 poison counters, they get the number of poison counters equal to the difference. So we need to proliferate after this. So, it means we can this turn go like this. Now we proliferate. Man, we are at 11 from all those proliferates. Nah. I wanted to give him, but I, I won't. So, we probably just go with this one, right? We could also Sunfall, but then we lose the advantage that we just did. So I think it's a bit better this way. And let's attack the Raska. So we know they will die of poison counters, so the life doesn't matter really here. I mean, let's draw a card for this reason. Let's cycle the card for this reason. 
Let's play land. I mean, let's play Loran. This way we get some board presence. I think it's pretty good. And I think this is his last draw, right? He he knows, he sees the writing on the wall. Like, we ultimate with Raska, we proliferate on the next turn, and Invoke the Spur kills one of those, and Raska is still here. He died to his own Raska. That's one of the small joys of this deck. All right, yes, I think that's all of the six and seven drops from our deck, right? All right, better. <laughs> Shuffler, stop it. <laughs> stop it. All right, so we are going first with Farmhands. So we have quite a lot of tap lands, but we can work around this. Uh, we get rid of one of the runs. I think it will be the marsh. You know what? Ready query. We are so far from getting... I, I guess it slows us down, but it's not like we have other plays, right? So we will just keep playing two drops for a while, then play the Emperor, and then hopefully hit something from the top that is relevant. I mean, that's a lot of value. Uh, we are not cycling, so let's get rid of the tower, maybe. You know, it's not like we have a three drop, right? Shaffler made sure of it. So, yeah, right now we just chill, play some creatures, keep blocking and see where that gets us. Spirited Companion is okay. So we want double to drop on the next turn, so we definitely need the planes right now. Our early game was pretty abysmal, but still, we are at 18 and we have some initiative. By going first, we make a pretty good headway. It's funny, uh, this is under synergy because this is temporary buff and it means uh, initiate won't train, basically. <laughs> yep, those are all of the seven drops from our deck. Great, thank you, Shuffler. So, how do we do it? I think we just go Farmhand and Spirited Companion. Uh, I should go with the Spirited Companion first because there is chance of drawing like some relevant to drop. And now I won't be able to play it. So a slight mess play. But you know, we are trying to keep up the tempo. That's the excuse for the day. See? That was indeed Fateful Absence, which would mean that he attacks with everything and we can get some tasty blocks. But still, uh, we can kill the Vanguard anyway. So I think it's okay. I think we should be winning this game, man. Right, is this some kind of a ganja? You know what, it's not like we get any difference, right? Like, he trades for two creatures. If he a ganjas, he still trades for two creatures. So, it's basically the same stuff. And we're close to bridge the multiverse, even with this abysmal start, man. But with farmhands, we just keep drawing lands every turn. We naturally draw only three lands so far. Alright, that's why we triple block. And now his board is not extremely scary, I'll tell you that. And we say go. And we're actually really close to breaching the multiverse, man. Two more turns, and that's it. And whenever deals combat damage to a player, if it doesn't have... Alright, I, I remember this one. Just for the sake of training, we do it now. They will draw a card, I don't like it but it really slows them down and when we hit 7 mana we will win anyway like we can absolutely out outvalue him and we are at 8 so it's not oh that's a nice draw now we just need land from the top man you know it's it's not the best play but trading one drop for a one drop he has three cards, four cards in total, so maybe he can put some pressure, but with Emperor we should be okay. The The big question is, can we hit a land from the top? I usually don't say it, like I want the seventh land from, you know, from the top, but in this situation we actually do. King Daria, that will be a problem, but it's a creature tokens only, that's good. And he will train, that will hurt a little bit, but that's what we have to do. So that's some damage to our face. Man, we need this land from the top. I think we might survive one turn more, but not two. Unless we draw something really, really relevant. Perfect. That's That makes me regret putting her into the deck. <laughs> but you know what? She is a little bit annoying at least. 
because of the Emperor, right? Now King Darien doesn't really want to attack, and if he attacks with one creature, we have another shot. And then Emperor can minus two. Vanguard. Alright, not the... Alright, I think we, we are okay with this one. Face. It's not the place, bro. This one single time. Face is not the place. No way of drawing this last land, isn't it? <laughs> like, bro, you can draw up to six with hand of full of seven drops. That's that's the best deal I can give you. And I'm like, okay, I will play on your rules shuffler. You are the master. I will just just wait until you shuffle me, the man. <laughs> See, bridge the multiverse, best card ever. <laughs> Jokes aside, uh, we just needed one more land to completely win the game, but it turns out wedding announcement and the shell was enough.